All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new week. Uh, hope you had a great week. Good morning, uh, sir. Good morning. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, maybe Kishan, you can lead us in prayer. Yes, sir, sir. Yes. Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus, for, th for this day and this morning, Lord. As, Lord, we are beginning our class and a day, Lord, help me and guide me, Lord. And especially, Lord, you bless him, our sir, Lord, and whatever he is, Lord, we can get done. We can equip ourselves, Lord, and Lord, I bless everyone in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Kishan. All right. So let me just present the notes. Um, so last week we talked about the upward Jim Inglis, uh upward inward model. Uh, let me just project that. Yes. So upward inward outward model. Um, we talked about how. Uh, these four aspects, love the Lord your God with all your heart, the inward model, love your neighbor as yourself, outward, go and make disciples, forward, teaching them to go and make disciples again. Right. So we looked at how, now, oh, of course, Jimmy Glee has written it in detail, but here we're just looking at uh, summarizing what this is all about. Um, and each one of us can apply this model in our cell groups. Uh, we can also apply it in our churches, right? We can do that as well. Now, we also looked at how to lead a great cell group meeting, uh, good environment, praise and worship, uh, Christ-centeredness, uh, delegating responsibilities, being sensitive to the people who are attending the life group, the cell group, um, conflict handling, uh, you know, following up with the uh, new, new people who visit the cell group. And very importantly, we talked about what do we do with our children? So many times we feel that, OK, you know, children, okay, we'll give them some crayons and they'll sit and they'll, you know, do some coloring. But don't underestimate the spiritual capabilities of children, right? Because nowadays, children are uh, really very high in their thinking and their understanding. And uh, so it'll be good to have children also sit for the, for the worship because they watch, they learn. And then you can delegate somebody to, uh, you know, lead the children uh, maybe you could it could be a topic that you can choose every week every time you meet and that way even the children are growing up in the lord so it's not like the children are saying okay let's go to cell group we can you know anyways we can play some games no it's not about that right uh, yes of course you can make it a fun time but also ensure that children are getting the word uh, children are involved in equipping themselves Right, uh, and you can start off from the age of, I would say, five. Uh, five, right? From five, you can get them to sit for classes, uh, sit for, and begin to teach them scriptures. Right, uh, maybe uh, children, toddlers is, you know, that's it. That they can, you know, do something else. But uh, children five and above, you can begin to, you know, have exciting, meaningful uh, classes for them. And and those, what we do now. Uh, years later, they will remember, right? Because those are seeds sown in their lives. Then we looked at responsibilities of a cell group leader uh, and personal life and character, right? Uh, be a model, be an example, be passionate about what you're doing. Don't just do it just because, okay, I've been asked to do it or I've been doing it for five years. No, be passionate about it. Uh, you know, the Bible says, Paul says, you know, fan into flame. Right. So, yes, that, that flame, that fire may burn out, uh, but you've got to fan it into flame. Right? Uh, that's something we do. And then we talked about conviction as well, being led, uh, uh, you know, uh, by, by knowing that you are the leader and you are imparting into people's lives and they, are, in turn, are going to go out and make a significant uh, change in the kingdom of, for the kingdom of God. Right? Because many a times, you know, we think, oh, there's only 12 people. Oh, man, I want to see those hundreds and, uh, you know, 500,000. Uh, but we need to understand the vision right, is different, right? Here it's 12 people. Uh, but the impact that you make on that 12 can reach to thousands years later, right? So always be driven that way. All right, so let's pick up from where we stopped. Let's look at um, ministering to, I think we stopped here. I'm not sure where we stopped. Yes, ministering to, 
cell members, right? Uh, chapter six here. All right. So before I begin, uh, feel free to you know unmute and ask questions in between. Uh, and you can also post your questions on the chat. Uh, uh, since I'm projecting this, I can't see the questions. So maybe one of us can just uh, uh, cue me in if there are questions. Just let me know. You can unmute. Let me know if there are questions, and then we can continue. All right. So ministering to your cell members. Right uh, now, when you have a cell group, there will be people who are coming who are saved. There will be people who are unsaved. There will be new believers. There will be believers who are there for 20 years. Uh, they know everything from the Bible. Now, important thing, work with each member appropriately, accordingly, and take time to build them up. Now, if you know that there's somebody in your cell group who's 20 years in the Lord, right? Uh, uh, the first thing, don't go first thing and say, okay, you know what, I, I can teach you this, I can teach you this. No, give them time, right? Because they are they have been they've you know been with the Lord. They probably you know know a lot about the about the word and about the, the foundational truths of God. Right? So uh, you can spend more time uh, with those who are new, right? Uh, so let's look at those few points. The first thing you do is when a visitor comes in. Now, whether they are a new believer, whether they are unbeliever, or whether they are, you know, many years in the Lord and now they suddenly come to our church and they're joining the cell group. These are certain points we must do. First one, the history, the vision, and the purpose of the church. Right. So you you tell them. Right. Now, you may not know the history. It's good to go back. Find out, talk to your leaders, talk to uh, talk to your pastor. Ask him how did you start off? What was the you know uh, what were the challenges that you faced, and how did you know God uh, build this church into what it is now? Right? Get to know the history uh, and drive the vision and the purpose of the church. Right. So that is something. Uh, that is why we have our announce in our announcements every Sunday. We drive it. Uh, the vision of all people's church is to be salt and light to the city of Bangalore, a voice to the nation and to the nations. Right? We drive it. So even you know, you wake up one of our church members in the midnight, 2 a.m., you say, hey, what's the vision of the church? They'll know it because they've heard it and heard it and heard it and heard it. it it's just gone in. Right? Uh, they don't have to say, you know, hey, wait, let me go to the website and check what's the, what's the vision. No. Because we've been driving it in, right? And so when we do this, we begin to, you know, instill it into our cell group members. All of a sudden, you'll see that, hey, it's not about me, it's not about the leader, but it's about being salt and light wherever we are, right? To be a voice, right? Uh, the voice of God, to be, uh, you know, uh, God's mouthpiece wherever we are. Right? Then we can also reiterate every week, whenever you meet, the church's statement of faith. Right? Uh, what, do, what do we believe in? Now, every church will have a statement of faith. Right? So uh, if you look at it, they'll say, okay, these are what we believe in. We believe in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We believe in the Trinity. We believe that uh, the Holy Spirit has nine gifts, and we can all operate in those nine gifts. And uh, we believe that God is you know, uh, equipping each one of us to be uh, every uh, you know member is a minister, and so you every church will have statement of faiths. So go over that document with them, right? Now sometimes you know we may feel that hey these are things they already know, right? Or or what will they think of me? You know I, I've been I, you know I've been started I've started this life group. It's five years now. We're still talking about the statement of faith, the vision, and uh, what is he going to think of me? No, don't worry about what people think. Because what you're doing is you're you're really if the seed is already sown you're watering it, right? Uh, so it's it's really good to do this, right? If people ask you in a cell group, hey, why are we doing this every time? Let them know. You know, this is why we are doing it. We are we are reiterating it every now and then. Now it's simple as this: we have breakfast, lunch, dinner. Now the next day we can say, hey, no, yesterday I had breakfast, lunch, dinner. No. Today, I don't want breakfast, lunch, dinner. We don't do that, right? We wake up, we have breakfast, lunch, dinner. Why? Because we need to do that. Our body needs it. The same way, 
our spirit needs and our mind also needs these things um, you know the statement of faith why we're doing what we're doing uh, just to keep us on track right uh, then we have information about the church membership now when church membership comes uh, 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 a couple of chapters later we'll talk about how church membership as well <clears throat> regarding church membership now different churches have different rules right now in apc uh once you're uh, you know three or four months attending church right you can begin to volunteer in the church right? you can volunteer in certain areas uh ushering team all the different teams sound and setup team uh, media team you can volunteer right but if you want to become a life group leader or a cell group leader we have different rules because this is uh, you know, you're 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 talking to people. You're it's a it's a ministry role. So for that, we usually say, okay, you need to be uh, twelve months, you, at least a year. You need to have been a, a part of APC, and after that, six months, you have to at least be part of a cell group, and then you can you know start your own cell group, right? But and membership is something that you know after three months or four months, if a family decides, hey. You know, I want to be part of this church. Uh, they can always come. We have membership class. And again, in the membership class, we we let them know about everything of the church, right? So this is the vision. We have five locations in Bangalore. We have different locations in India. Uh, this is what we uh, were. This is what we are now. This is what we want to be. This is the vision uh, 10 years down the line. We introduce our, our pastoral team, our staff, everybody. Um, and then you know they become members of course there's they sign in their details and uh and then they're church members right then we need to be committed to a cell group now in in when when it comes to a cell group of say for example there's a couple and right? they join the cell group a uh, young couple cell group it's very important to for the life for the a cell group leader to inform those who are part of the cell group to be committed right why because sometimes we take this for granted right meaning we say okay they're coming they will come right of course god has put it in their hearts and they really want to grow with the vision of the church they want to grow personally and they like the community they like the fellowship but it's also important as cell group members to you know, to let them know, hey, commitment is very important, right? Commitment is very important to be committed to the cell group. And that may involve volunteering in small ways, being there, right? Just being present in a cell group. Uh, it really encourages the life group leaders as well. Right? They feel that, hey, you know, this is, it's nice, you know. Imagine you have a cell group and then, uh, you know, you, normally you have 12 people. All of a sudden, you just have two people. It, it, you know, sometimes it discourages the cell group leaders. But then, we, it's important that we must teach them. We tell them, hey, be committed to the cell group, right? Uh, learn about their future. So one of the things that we always tell our leaders is, uh, during their life group leaders training, is when you start a cell group from day one, your mind, uh, our, our intention, our thought should be, how can I raise up more leaders from day one? Right now, you don't have to go tell them that. But this is in the mind, right? OK, I'm starting a cell group. If I have 10 people, I have 10 leaders, right? But I need to train them up. It may take a year, it may take two years, it may take three years. But eventually, I can have 10 leaders in the church. Imagine that, right? You are one leader. Three years down the line, you have 10 cell groups. All 10 people in your cell group have started a, their own cell group. So you let them know that, hey, you're not just attending just to, just to be here to fellowship. But eventually, we want to see you becoming a leader. It's not that, OK, I, I'm going to lead, and you will be under me for the rest of your life. No. Right? So we always intentionally tell our cell group leaders. And then we also, uh, you know, since people are from other other faiths or people are, you know, coming from different backgrounds, 
right? Uh, they may be Christians, but they're coming from different backgrounds. They may be coming from a Brethren Church or a CSI Church or any other uh, denomination. Now, we don't uh, ridicule them if they don't know anything, but just teach them, right? Uh, it could be water baptism. It could be on praise and worship. It could be um, the Lord's table. Right? So many things. So we can take time to teach them. Right? And we look at uh, some more on how we can do that, right? Cell lessons, right? Now we know that at APC, uh, I think I've mentioned it many times, we discuss what was the Sunday sermon, right? Now you may be wondering, hey, we, we, we are you know doing the Sunday sermon, what is the cell lessons? Now, one of the another important thing that we encourage our cell group leaders is as you start a cell group cover the book foundations right we have our publication you can go to i think it's apcwo.org slash foundations you can get the pdf there uh, but you know go over biblical foundations course now this will involve praise and worship faith uh, you know uh, um, um, the lord's table uh, covenants simple things right uh, uh, water baptism Holy Spirit baptism, uh, who is the Holy Spirit, uh, basic foundations. Uh, now, how can we do that? You know, Because now you're meeting once in two weeks. You're covering the Sunday topic. How can I do this uh, course? Now, here's where the cell group leader must take the initiative. What he or she can do is inform the cell group, hey, uh, it's very important to do even this foundations course. Can we meet maybe twice a month apart from our cell groups? We can meet in the same place and we'll go over the book foundations. Or if that is too, uh, you know, I, we understand that people are working, can we meet via Zoom or online and go over this foundations course? Now, you can also tell them why you want to do it, right? Because it is to build us up. Now, some of them in the cell group may say, hey, I already know all of this. I've been 10 years in, in, in the Lord. I said, hey, it's OK. It's a, it's a refresher. Right? So why don't you join? And you may be, uh, it may give you an opportunity to answer questions since you've gone through all of this. Right? So you encourage them. Right? Uh, and you have this additional uh, session. Right? And as you're doing it, monitor their progress encourage them right uh, uh, there was a time i think it was early 2014 where we used to you know whenever we had visitors at church uh, or those who just made the first time decision to you know, follow the lord uh, our church service used to start at 10 30. so we used to ask them can you come at nine o'clock right. so some of them would come at nine o'clock and uh, you know, we had a team of maybe about four or five of us. Um, and we would teach them the foundations. Now, there were some of them who were, you know, senior citizens. They've been going to church all their life. right? But now they've come to uh, you know, APC. So we tell them, you know, it's good for you to go through it. So we did it. Um, and also those who joined the worship team, right? Now they are skilled in music, uh, which is good. But they also need to grow in the spirit. They also need to know the things of God. Right? Just because we are drumming or playing the bass doesn't mean we know everything, right? So we did that as well. We everyone who got into the worship team goes through the entire foundation course, right? Uh, but I'm just digressing, just to just just for us to understand the importance of the biblical foundations course, right? And then eventually, over time. Uh, the cell group leader can choose topics addition to what uh, to the Sunday sermons that are discussed on the regular uh, cell group meetings. Right? Uh, I hope I'm clear. Uh, uh, any questions? Is it clear? Uh, Do you understand what I was trying to say? Yeah, Shreve Kumar, go ahead. Uh, Master, I just want to know that um, do the every everyone in the cell group has to come together, uh, as you said. Uh, to win this refreshing course or because maybe there are reasons like uh, you know in the cell group there are only 
one or two person will be the newcomer or one family will be for that one reason all the family has to come or uh, do we have anything like that uh, you are uh, actually we are trying to find out in every cell group that how many newcomers are there and then you are joining together and doing something like that hope you hope yeah. that was yeah i understood i understood your question Shri yes. now uh Shri Kumar, to answer your question see what we normally say is everyone can join right uh, so they may be uh, as i was saying right uh, there may be two new people new believers in the uh, in the life cell group or or two uh, people who have come from a different church and they're part of uh, apc and now they've come into church there may be two of them and 10 of them are you know old timers they're happy with the cell group they've been coming to the cell group for the past maybe 3 4 years and they're happy now as a cell group leader what i would personally do is i would say all 12 of them let's meet together why because we can never say i know this right uh, even if they know it if we know it right we can always go back to it now remember that you know god is unlimited right and through the same word through the same scripture he can talk to us or minister to us in 10 different ways right so we can never say no right even now i read the foundations book right but when i go back to read it i don't read it with an attitude of oh man i've taught it for the past 10 years i studied it you know for 12 13 14 years back and i taught the course for past 10 years but i still read it and every time i read it it there is something that the lord can minister to me right so to answer your question shri kumar yes i i would encourage all the cell group all of them all the cell group members to attend uh because again it's just building each other up and they, if they have commitments they feel that okay they can't they're working professionals uh it's all right uh but you put the option out hey all of us can join all of us can grow together yeah so i hope that answers Shikuma. thank you pastor thank yeah. you yeah kennedy um in the event a cell group leader is absent or caught up in personal engagement how should choose somebody to stand in for you yeah that's a good very good question uh, now kennedy usually right uh, if if a life group what we do at apc is if, if a life group leader is busy or feels that he's got commitments he can't have it this week he has two options one option is say hey this week we cannot uh, i i'm busy so is it okay if we can meet the next week right uh and you know, some of them may be okay with it. Some and say, hey, we prepared for this week. Then what you can do is let them know that, okay, so this week I am not there, but instead of me, uh, you know, this the, you, you can choose somebody who's matured in the cell group. Um, you can say, uh, this person will facilitate the, the cell group, the life group. He will lead the discussions. And you can also talk to them personally give them some guidelines give them some direction on how to do it uh and yeah they can they can have the life group so but but then when you choose somebody uh, make sure you choose somebody who's matured in the lord you can also check with your cell group pastor um check with them see uh i'm not i'm traveling or i'm busy so i'm not able to lead the cell group uh but the cell group members are uh you know they want to have the cell group this week they don't want to postpone it uh so can I request this person to facilitate the discussion? Uh, if the cell group pastor is available, you can also request him to, you know, be there for the cell group so that, you know, just to be there, let his presence be there. If not, you can just appoint somebody, somebody who's matured in the Lord and request them to uh, lead the cell group. And then this will be a good learning opportunity, actually, Kennedy, because what happens is you can always go back and, ask him for feedback talk to him uh, uh you know he can discuss you know you can say hey how did the discussion go were you able to get some important points out what were the uh, how were the discussions stirred uh and and you know <clears throat> were there places that you felt you had to improve were there places that you did well then you can also talk to the life group members and say how was it you know so basically you're just it's not like oh i'm not there this week so i uh, you know you'll do what you want and 
I'll meet you next week. No, that's not how it is. You're still involved. You say, hey, uh, you know, uh, you, you, I love what Paul says uh, in the last letter to, um, you know, to Timothy. He says, Timothy, you fight the good fight of faith, right? You have to do things all across uh, this, uh, you know, the entire, all his, during his time of ministry, he was, you know, he was a small boy, Timothy, uh, 17 odd years old, but he has raised him up to such a level uh, that he says, Timothy, you're a servant of God. We, you have the same spirit that I have. We both have the same spirit. That's what he says. Right. So uh, it's a good learning opportunity as well. Right. And you finally you can see, hey, uh, this person can you know go on to become a good leader and right. Uh, Sorry, excuse me. So, yes, uh, you can choose somebody. Now, one of the things that happened many, many years back to me was, uh, you know, there was this, uh, there was a need for a worship leader. Right? So I had already auditioned for the worship as a worship leader. I go through the auditions many years back. And there was a sudden need, right? So uh, this opportunity came and they said, uh, can you go and, you know, lead worship in Hindi. Right? We were focusing on a few Hindi churches and Hindi ministry. I said, see, I can lead the songs, but I cannot, you know, in between, I cannot exhort and talk in Hindi. Uh, but I could lead songs. But that door, right, just that opportunity opened up so many opportunities for me. Now, I'm not a Hindi-speaking sp person, but over time, you know, I got to travel to so many places in North India, leading worship in Hindi. Right? Now, they were very good, uh, you know, uh, even in North India, there were many of them uh, who would lead worship. Uh, and they were very good at Hindi and all of that. But but this one opportunity opened a, a big door, right, where I, I traveled. I think even now, um, Kishan would know, we came to Varanasi uh, many, many years back. And... Uh, we led. We had like six hours of worship. Uh, I think it was twenty. I think it was twenty twelve, twenty twelve or twenty thirteen. Six hours of worship, right? Worship and prayer. Worship and prayer. Now, we were all English speaking people, right? But it was very. Uh, it was hard, but then it was a door that opened for us. So three, three or four hours of Hindi songs. And so we had to learn up in these songs. We had to, you know, uh, have, we had those lyrics. Then we went on the internet. We looked at, hey, there are there are English worship songs that have been translated, you know, contemporary worship songs that have been translated to Hindi. We can sing those. And I remember the church would come and the people in you know these cities and towns, North India, they would come and ask how. Uh, what song is that? And we began to share the lyrics with them, share the, you know, the videos with them, and they learned it. Right, so basically, what I'm trying to say is, Kennedy, these these little doors that God opens, you can always, you know, encourage others, and that door can be can lead them to their calling. Right, so uh, just an encouragement. Right, any other question? Okay. Yeah. Let me. <clears throat> All right, so let's look at step two. Yeah, we just discussed on that as well, the pastor's teachings on Sunday messages. Uh, so you that is your main topic that you have to talk about. Uh, but in between, you can have these uh, BFC studies, uh, biblical foundation courses. Right? Then you have special topics. Uh, now, we don't want to become a cell group that is program oriented right this is how we do it i mean structure is good rules are good right guidelines are good uh but sometimes god can you know really take us out of those guidelines and rules so there we remain flexible right so for example your this is just example right so your leading the worship in the cell group, and you feel that you need to continue with worship. There's something happening. Right? You know, the Holy Spirit is leading the entire group to 
just you know soak in his presence soak in that uh, you know the glory of god the presence of god and it's happened many a times right and it's 20 minutes it's half an hour it's 45 minutes now as a cell group leader don't be rigid don't say okay let's stop let's stop everyone okay stop go back sit to your seats uh, sit and let's go back to our discussions now what are we doing we're stopping we're hindering the work of the holy spirit right so here we are to remain flexible now there will be times also where uh, a, a, a cell group leader would want to discuss some important topics right uh, apart from the sunday sermon so they do have the freedom to you know talk about those um, topics but at apc we're very very careful what is being taught and what is being preached so one of the things we do tell them is you can discuss your sunday sermons then you can share about the topic that you are interested to share on but uh, you know you need to send us this notes what you're talking about right uh, uh send us the notes and probably also send us what are discussion topics now why are we doing this it's not like we are like you know uh, uh legalistic hey you can't share no we got all this in place because we learned that it's always good to have this because we never had it before and people you know say for example somebody will come up and begin to teach saying you know there is no rapture or there is the holy spirit stopped working in the book of acts now there'll be two new believers sitting there saying oh so holy spirit so why am i praying for the holy spirit then because he stopped working in the book of acts there's no rapture then oh then what do i do now uh, but you know so this other person said there's a rapture because the bible was talking about that in uh, thessalonians uh, what's happening there's confusion right? why because one wrong teaching can completely alter right it can affect the entire group so that is why especially in our teaching it's, it's good it's okay when we are you know in, in apc one of the things we do is it's okay to make mistakes right practical mistakes in our speaking or, or, or just genuine mistakes we do make but when it comes to our teaching material we try to always make sure that we are in line with the word of god right so that's why we ask them to uh, now some of them may take it the wrong way some of them may say, hey, what, you don't trust me. Uh, or some of them may say, you know, uh, say, okay, sure, I'll send it to you, you can. But you need to learn how to handle those who say, you know, what, what is this, you don't trust me, I've been a cell group leader for 10 years. It's okay. You ask them for the material. You ask them, what are you discussing about? Why? Because you're thinking of those 12 people who are going to listen to the, what this person is going to say. Right? So uh, it's not wrong. It's not wrong at all, right? Now, ministering to cell group members between the meetings. We talked about this briefly, but let's just look at these few points. Make efforts to contact, meaning call, email, visit them uh, during the week, encourage them, work with them on a personal level, make sure that all 12 are being cared for. Uh, pay special attention yeah this is very important pay special attention to those who are going through difficult times and going through crisis and so there will be people who are maybe suicidal people are going through depression people who have uh, you know uh, are, have, have lost their job uh, a couple going through a challenging time or a couple uh, you know, really praying for their children. Uh, so there's so much that is happening, right? So pay a little bit more attention to them, right? Uh, now it's not like you're, you know, you're always behind them and asking what happened. Is everything okay? No. One is you can have that additional time in your prayer time to just remember them in prayer. Two is uh, just, just you know, just a call in between. Hey. I know you're going through a difficult time. I know it's difficult. You're thinking about you know, your children or you're thinking about the job. Uh, if you can help them practically, go ahead and do that. But just being a moral support to them, right? Uh, and that really, uh, you know, people will remember that. 
they may you know move on to another church or they move on to another country uh, but people will remember right a lot of our folks from apc have moved on to different countries and they still remember you know hey this is what happened in the life group once or this is what happened at church once uh, you know uh, they remember people and uh, what is surprising is there are people who have moved on to different countries and they're still you know in touch with our church members it has been five six years they're still in touch whatsapp and they meet via zoom it was amazing yeah. wow how did that happen right why is it that you know they are in the us or they are in the uk different countries they still log into some of our prayer times they still log into some of our conferences why because there's something that happened on a personal level right and that they will not forget right so be with them uh, during those difficult times develop a family um uh, again making disciples don't be afraid to talk about issues that people are going through uh, drinking habits smoking negligence of family right and there are many many right uh, there will be people who are uh you know suicidal addicted to pornography addicted to all kinds of things like gaming right so don't be afraid to talk about those issues right uh, as a leader you can talk about them uh you know different people go through different problems now we don't have to say oh let's not talk about pornography it's very bad and you know what if others hear that word no it's a real challenge that people are going through and it has to be dealt with right just uh, on sunday there was this couple that came up to me and said you know uh, my son who uh, he was he's in i think he was in 11th standard uh, and the mother says uh, i saw his phone there's a lot of uh, you know uh, lewd things that are there on his phone i was very surprised i was uh, you know i don't know what to do she was very worried now it's a genuine genuine fear for a parent but what do we do we need to deal with this situation very carefully so uh, uh, you know she, she told me how will you put it across to him he's not going to share it with you because it's a sensitive topic right so i said is it okay if i just talk to him and and she said yeah fine I, you can you can so i i just spoke to him I said hey we all go through problems we all, um so do you want to share something is there something that's in your life and and he just began to share right now it may not happen every time but he began to share right and i said it's all right i mean drinking and smoking and pornography are the, both are sin sin is sin Right. so that's what i explained to him it's innocent it's not like pornography is a greatest sin and then uh, you know drinking and smoking is just like small sin no black is black white is white sin is sin and i began to talk to him i said nothing wrong all you need to do is you need help to get out of it right? and and we can work together so don't be afraid to talk about these issues meeting the needs of people within the cell group wherever possible try to meet needs right counseling sometimes uh, you know cell group leaders will need that additional counseling you can do as much as you can when you feel that things are beyond uh, your hand to you know to look after you can always inform your cell pastor immediately and we have something called as christless counseling where we have uh, trained counselors who can counsel and sure we you know gene as well uh, so we have a team of about 3 4 uh, trained counselors and they will be able to you know uh, over time work with them right so remember you are a cell group leader or a pastor and you're probably a working professional now you may not have the time to work with them every week or every two weeks right uh, because these are issues that have happened and you just need time it's not going to solve the problem in 10 minutes of talking to them they won't they need time they need two hours in one sitting so you may not have those times always don't feel guilty you can just uh, lead them to the counselors right again handling conflicts issues and problems uh, uh, get them together right never try to resolve conflicts behind each other's back 
Never do that. Because this person may say something, the other person may say something. No, get them together. Discuss and solve the problem. No, he said this, so that's why then the other person said this. No, get them together. Solve the problem and move on. Right? Um, now, this is a very, very important point here. And uh, this is something that we, especially in it, I think, I wouldn't say only in India, but I think this should be applied everywhere around the world, right? In, in, in terms of ministry. Mentors and prodigies should be of the same sex, right? Now, as a pastor, you may be a, a male pastor or a male cell group leader. You may lead maybe a youth girl or a, a couple to Christ. Wonderful. Now, if the woman says, or the girl says, can you, can I meet you and get to know more about Christ, more about Jesus, more about how I can, you know, build myself up, what is the first response you should, should have? First response should be, hey, I will lead you to somebody who can help you. Right? Yes, I am the pastor of the church. I am the leader of the cell group. But I will lead you to somebody, maybe another lady or another matured woman who can help you. Now, there will be times they have specific questions for you. Make sure you're there in a public setting to answer those questions. You're not meeting one-on-one -on -one, and there's no one-on-one -on -one interaction uh, uh, for too long. right? Now, why do we say this? Because we need to be careful. Uh, you know, the Bible says, you know, uh, don't think you're standing because lest the enemy come and we fall. Right now, is it a good idea? You know, somebody's come to the Lord. Wonderful. It's a rejoicing in heaven. But God has also given us a mind. Now, we may feel as a leader, oh, I want to equip this person and uh, she should become the next, you know, uh, great evangelist or great leader. Now, as a married man or as a male pastor, male life group leader, cell group leader, first thing you do is you lead them to the person of the same sex. Now, in church, for example, or for example, in a cell group meeting, you have 12 people and this youth comes and says, hey, I have this question. Make sure that you're there in front of everybody. People are there around. You can you know, talk to them. You, know, you don't have to be fearful of them. Right? Uh, you can talk to them, be free, right? Uh, but be aware of what is happening, right? Uh, why? Because we've seen many, many great leaders fall, right, uh, in this area. So we need to be careful, right? So mentoring in, in APC is always male and male, female and female, same sex, right? Uh, uh, but they can be of different ages. So they can be a 50-year-old mentoring a 20-year-old or a, uh, or a, you know, or a uh, early 40s, or, uh, you know, matured couple mentoring a young couple, right? That way it could be done. Uh, but not, you know, mentors and prodigies should not be of the same sex. So that's something that we avoid. All right, so uh, let's take a break. We'll come back at 10 o'clock. Uh, and we will continue with uh, this. Right. This uh, there's a question from Kennedy. As a cell group leader, how do you set open, closed, or funnel questions when having a discussion? Okay. So first thing I do is Kennedy. Uh, so we also encourage our cell group leaders. Is is the question in line with what we are discussing? Now, for example, we are discussing plans, purposes of God, right? And that is why in our uh, sermon, in our life group leaders training material, we have put the questions, right? The questions that they can discuss. Now, if you're discussing plans, purposes, and you know God's vision for our life, suddenly a question may come, when is the Antichrist coming? Right Now, the Antichrist will come when he has to come, but that is not in line with the question here. The question here is, how do I fulfill my 
purpose or vision that God has for me. Somebody else may ask a question. Uh, you know, I heard that you know uh, the Antichrist has already come. What do you think about that? It's a genuine question it's from the Bible, but not in line with what was discussing. So first thing is, I will cut off that question. I will tell that person, hey, it's not in line. Very, uh, you know, very maturely, but very lovingly, I would say. Um, it's not in line with the discussion that we have now, but I'm free after the cell group to talk to you and answer that question. And we can do it personally. And that's the first thing I do. And so, so sometimes the questions may be, you know, there will be people who will ask three, four questions at one time. And so again, you can tell them, hey, uh, since we are a smaller setting, if, you know, what you can do is ask one question so that everyone gets an opportunity to ask a question. And at the end, after the cell group, if you feel that uh, if we have time, you can always ask the question. Second option, you can email the questions to us. We will, you know, uh, you know, email you all the answers that we can get, do our best to answer those questions. That's the second option. Right. Um, now first thing is make sure that those questions are in line. Now it's not wrong to ask questions from the Bible. That is, but it's just that we need the wisdom. Right? Okay, we're talking about this, so we ask questions. So, so if somebody is saying uh, we are talking about vision, purpose, and all of that, and somebody asks a question, uh, you know, how do I know? You know, when can I uh, step out from what I'm doing right now? Now that is in line with. You can answer it. Right. Uh, some random question that is not in line, or people may have, uh, you know, uh, not only questions, but people may have points of discussion which is, again, not in line. Uh, lovingly stop them, lovingly correct them, lovingly lead them. Right. Uh, do it lovingly. Right. Uh, never rebuke or mock them. Do it lovingly, and I'm sure uh, they will understand. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back at 10 o'clock and we'll continue from where we stopped.